back to another episode of From the Shadows. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. Now, we're going to start off with a question of the day, because that's the thing we're doing now. And the question of today, um, which is just off the top of my list here, is... What's your favourite football club? And that's a nice easy one. But those of you who don't know, I am a Fulham fan. Yeah, that's right. Laugh it up. Anyway, so let me know what you, who you guys support in the comments. And you know, I already know some of you because I actually asked this question on the question of the day back when I was doing Portsmouth, uh, back before Christmas, I think it was actually. So quite a long time. So plenty new of you uh, since then. So do let me know in the comments who you support. And of course, if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop it in the comments with the hashtag QOTD. Right, now then. Um, <laughs> So in the last episode, we beat Toulouse by three goals to one, and it was a bit of a false storm, perhaps. I don't know. I feel like it was a very solid performance, and Alberto Cherry gave me all kinds of feels that I felt some feels, and it made me very happy. A hat-trick for him on his debut for us was just the perfect start to our life in the top flight. Now, um, I've signed one more player since... Uh, then I'm still being a bit careful with the money because we do have a lot of things to still take into account this season. However... We are looking very strong financially. Uh, the money we're up to is about three million in the bank now, and we look like we're probably going to get a decent amount over this course of this year, and probably have a balance of around nine million at the end of the season. So that means that next year our transfer budget could be massive. We could be talking sort of ten million potentially in the bank for next year's transfer fund, and that, my friends, is going to be fantastic because then I can really go out and start doing some shopping. I was tempted to do a quote from White Chicks then, but I didn't, so you can thank me for that later. Right. So, with that in mind, I went out and I signed someone. In fact, I've also. Um, started looking at this guy and this is a guy i've brought in um well sorry i said brought in remember i said i was going to look at a guy to bring in through for real money this is that guy basically this is carlos ruiz he's peruvian and he plays for a team called cesar vallejo over in peru and weird I, like my scout wanted to go to south america so i sent one of them to south america usually to do you know brazil argentina and whatnot but i sent it to the whole region so just in case because sometimes you do find gems in the other countries but this is what came back. Now, often the players for the other clubs in Argentina uh, and Brazil, they, they still, you can get them quite cheap, but they still cost quite a fair amount of money. This lad, however, I actually thought was a relatively decent bit of business. He's cost us £675,000. He is only 17, which means he can't join us till next year, but that's fine. You know how I like to do that kind of thing anyway. But I think that there's some potential in this lad. He's a fullback, and I'm hoping that he's the one that's eventually going to replace Cantini, really, uh, at fullback. He's three-star already, which is crazy. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with him. He's going to be joining us in March, so he might even get to play some of the end of the season. You never know. So that's Carlos Ruiz. I'm really happy with him. He looks like he's got some fucking great stats. In fact, he's actually gone up in his stats a little bit since I actually... Uh, that's great, yeah. So there you go, £675,000. He is in well not yet he's not and the other guy i've brought in this is jordan lyden uh, he was released by aston villa he's an australian international uh no he's not he's an australian that's it end of sentence but he's another fullback and again decent potential again i just thought right screw it let's just pick up some players see what we can find on the free agents market for now and just try to keep this nice and tight with the finances at this club because we've got to be very very careful but again decent potential and decent current ability now he's gone out on loan for now uh, to vvv over in the eredivisie just because i want to get him some football for this season because he's probably not going to play so much and i've sent a couple of the other lads out on loan jaw kf has gone out on loan to a third tier side because i want him to be i want him to have a full season out on loan, but where he can start practically every game. He's going to be a key player there, and I wanted him to do that so that he could then come back next year and be amazingly strong for us. Now, whether or not that's going to be a good idea or not, but I think that will make him a much stronger player in the future. But we still have the likes of Philippe and Chevalier, and all those guys have remained at the club. Mutasami, uh, Mutasami has also left to join uh, a club on loan. Um... Bar did get offers from him on loan, but I, I think we might need him as a backup. So, yeah. Also, the one other... Oh, actually, I can see who's going out on loan. So, Ikebane has also gone out on loan to Colmar. Uh, Michel's gone out to Tubitze. Uh, oh, and Mutasami did actually go out to Red Star. Leo Halloween's finally left because he wasn't going to get a game. And I also got rid of Ahmed Kashi. I know when he's, we only signed him last summer. He's an okay... Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> he was two-star when he was actually at the club, and now he's left. He's four-star. That's hilarious. Um, basically... We got a bid in for him on the final day, and I thought, well, he's not going to play very much. We've got Bulens there and Musilu, so really, is he likely to get much game time? Probably not. Let's cash in, get 250k for him. Why the hell not? Our attendances have been solid. We're getting sort of 250 to 300,000 per match in terms of uh, income, which is great. So let's talk about what's actually been going on. Now, as you can see, we had an amazing second game. I couldn't believe this. I mean, we did not deserve this at all. Monaco have played fantastically this season so far. But we had one of our bits of luck that like we got last season. And Didats gave us the win. 
uh, at the Stade Louis the Second Stadium in Monaco. And amazingly, we're getting higher attendances than they are, and that's saying a lot. And look at the squad, though. Vedran Choluka, Ezekiel Garay, Rizitsky, uh, Rakitsky, rather, Torresidis, Tulalon, Moutinho, Bakayoko, uh, Ocampos, Martial. Like, they just weren't up for it on that night. And they actually had a poor start, but they've really picked it up again um, since then, so I wouldn't worry about that. But to get this kind of scalp was just huge for us. Cherry didn't have the best of games, uh, so we actually had to sort of switch things up a little bit, but Didat has had a fantastic start to the season, so there we go. And I kind of wanted to follow that up with a great result against Nantes. Unfortunately, it did not happen. They were very, very good. Ismail Bangura put them ahead in the first minute, and they just never looked back, unfortunately. And Florian Thovan, who, of course, in real life, is a transfer target of quite a few Premier League sides, gave them a 2-0 win. And I was disappointed in this one, because on the back of such a fantastic win away at Monaco, I thought, if we can start the season with three wins out of three, that's going to give us a massive chance at staying up. Just, you know, nine points on the board already would have been brilliant. But it wasn't quite going to be as simple as that, I thought. Uh, and then we had to go to San Etienne in our next match. And it was a similar kind of story, but they were better and they were away. From, you know, we were away from home in this one, so fair enough. But we did take the lead from a corner for Jeremy Oban. And I thought that was the start of something fantastic because he's having a good season so far. But then Mevlut Erdinch and Aaron Johansson, of course, I believe is the American Aaron Johansson. Yep. It's cool to see him at San Etienne, actually. Made it 2-1 to San Etienne. We just couldn't quite get back. We made a few changes to try and shake things up, but it just wasn't happening. Quinta Pereira also picked up a knock, which kept him out for two weeks, which was a disappointing turn of events. Next up, there's a few, bit of a gap in there as well because there was an international break. We had Stad Rene, and I really wanted a win at home here. I really, really did, but it just wasn't to be. We took the lead through Alberto Cherry with his first goal since the hat-trick on the opening day, um, unfortunately, but it was from the penalty spot as well. Gave us the lead, but... Then they got a man sent off. Vincent Payot was sent off. And I thought, right, we're one nil up against our parent club. Let's do this. Let's just get the win. And unfortunately, five minutes later, Admir Mehmedi made it one all. We managed to hang on for a point. But I think that perhaps the Toulouse game, and particularly the uh, Monaco game, were mm, false dawns, so to speak. It wasn't quite... You know, that's not how we're going to be playing in every game this year. We are going to be up against it. But the fact that we've got seven points on the board so far after, what is it, five matches? I think I think it's five. Let's just take a little gander at the league. Yeah, seven points from five games. It actually puts us in eighth place, amazingly. But as you can see, still only four points from the relegation places. Monaco's only defeat. Sorry, what am I talking about? Monaco's only defeat was against us. That's crazy. They're not won by many goals. Uh, Marseille right up there, as are nonce, to be fair. So I can sort of maybe understand why they beat us a little bit. I don't understand how we were able to beat Monaco. On another day, they'd have thumped us. It's just one of those things, I guess. Uh, we're going to be due one of those games ourselves pretty soon. In the bottom three, there's Montpellier, uh, Lille, and, of course, our parent club down there, too. So, yeah, as you can see, Cherry's up on the top scorers, as is Didats for the average ratings, which is always a nice to see. Hopefully, we can uh, carry on like this, but it's going to be massively tough because today is the day that we get to play, and that's rhyming against Paris Saint Germain. Let me just get my custom overall set up. All right, here we go. So, top goal scorer, of course, is Alberto Cherry with four goals in five matches. Still fairly good. Uh, Didats and Oban have one apiece. Assists, Didats has two. Player of the match, Didats, Cherry, and Musavu King. Average rating, of course, is Didats, of course. Key passes, he already has 26 key passes. Key tackles, uh, six from Musavu King and interceptions from Musavu King. As for average, oh, look at 4.8 million now. And Didas has gone up in value too, which is delightful. Um, let's just take a little gander at where, how he's doing in terms of the other. Wow, actually, he's got the best, most key passes of any player in the entire division so far. He, I'm glad I got him to sign a new deal with us because he is so important. He really, really is. Anyway, let's jump into the fixture today. It's Paris Saint-Germain against Paris FC, the first big crunch match in this entire save. I'm really looking forward to this because I have a horrible feeling that we're going to get absolutely battered. Um, Rudy Garcia is managing PSG now, which is interesting. So let's just do a little switcheroo here. Ah, right, okay, good. Pereira is back because Alan Richard had to play and it wasn't exactly uh, ideal. But, so Cherry, did that. Pereira, Gape, Oh, Gape. Excellent stuff. Is Mvia... Mm, is that wise? Gape has played well for our under-21s. That's what I would say. Or, our, you know, our reserves. Um, okay, yeah. Let's go for it. Jan Vier there. Bulens, the more sort of game time he gets, the better. I think by the end of the season, he will be, like, up here sort of level. He will certainly be past the... Uh, he'll be at the sort of maybe quarter two position in the old clock of uh, ability. Ten, Oban, Musavi King and Cantini at the back. That's your sort of standard back four. On the bench, Frick, Cavari, Gamiet, Hugo, Philippe, Mbia, and of course, Jabali. Uh, still a few others that I'd like to... I mean, Anzalek's not going to be back anytime soon. Umbar, I'd like to get him on the bench a little bit more, perhaps. Um, do we need two strikers? That's probably a bit too much. I don't need two strikers on the bench because we've only got one striker on the... You know, it seems a bit silly to have two strikers on the bench. Right. Um, 
Let's go. Let's go for this. Let's see if Dominic Gabe... He's been a hero for us in a few live comms last season. In fact, I think he's got the winner in like two of them. Are we good on this? Yep, we are. Okay, good. Right. Let's let's just do this. I don't expect us to win. Who have they got? So they've got Zlatan up front, of course. Insigne. They've got Lamela, Rabio, Lume well, of course, Lucas Romero. Uh, Mascherano, interestingly. Uh, Digne, Marquinhos, Thiago Silva, Danilo, and of course, Sirigu. Ariola in goal. David Luiz, Montero. Uh, Edin Dzeko. Uh, ooh, that's a name. Um, apologies if you are Turkish. I really do struggle with Turkish names because of all the um, modifiers on the top. I never know how to pronounce them properly. Agushan Ojgekup. Um, apologies. Uh, Cardozo and... Oh, Cardozo. No. Oh, no, wait. It's different Cardozo. Uh, and Prato. Prato is a pretty solid player as well, if I remember. The one I also fear is a guy called uh, Vieto. He was always a nightmare for me in my Portsmouth save. Right. But I don't think he plays for... Uh, PSG. He will at some point, probably, though, because, you know, FM. Uh, right, let's get this going here. Pereira isn't great with his conditioning at the moment, but I, I still think he's worth having in the team. Let's do this. It's going to be crazy tough, but if Cherry can come up with anything today, that would be fantastic. You know, he got three goals in his last game, um, in a live game anyway. This is going to be a case of us testing ourselves against the main... You know, this is the grudge that we've got. Let's see how we do against them. Because remember, eventually in this save, we're going to be beating them in matches, and that's going to be... Oh, disappointing. Rabio after eight minutes, puts PSG in front. I guess we were always going to suffer defeat against PSG, but I guess it's just a case of us sort of using it as a measuring stick to sort of judge our performances and how well we're doing in terms of the saves progression. Your games against PSG are going to become important like that. They've won the title five years in a row. I thought we'd cleared our lines, actually. I thought Cantini did a good job there, but unfortunately... Oh, cheeky. What a finish that is. Uh, I don't begrudge him that goal. It's a great finish from Rabio. Hopefully, we're not going to get absolutely battered here, but at times, some of the games have got away from us a little bit in the number of shots we've conceded. Uh, the San Etienne game is a prime example of that. Digne's ball in, win the header. Oh, don't clear it back to him. You've got all kinds of... Uh, this is going to be backs against the wall job, I sense. Thiago Silva, what a block. Digne, going to the byline, and that is fantastic defending, but we could end up be doing a lot of fantastic defending today. Uh, if Bulan's well, he's going to be having his work cut out, trying to cut out any of these passes. I think PSG have strengthened crazy. And, oh no, the worst thing we could do. And also, someone said you'd have to take players off every time they get a knock. I understand that, of course. But the fact is, I've left players on with knocks before, and they almost always get a second one and have to go off injured anyway. So it's just, I do it as a precaution. I'd rather them get a knock and have to come off than keep them on and end up getting a serious injury in the process. It's just how it is for me. I've just found horrible things with injuries in the past, so I've become probably more cautious than I have any need to be, but you know how it is. I'd rather just keep our full quota, particularly if it's important players. That's poor defending. In the end, we managed to get away with that, but letting Lamella run through you like that, it certainly shows the gap in class between the likes of PSG and the teams below you, basically. Um, there, you know, there are plenty of beatable teams in this league for us, but PSG are not one of them yet. Uh, those sort of top Oh, Insigne is around the back there. And a wonderful tackle again. We are pretty much just going to be laying here and thinking of England, uh, or France in this case, and taking this because it's just, you know, it's not happening for us. Gape. Lombard it downfield to absolutely no one. And, you know, it's not the tactic because it's just a case of they're a much, much better team than us. And we have to expect that. And that's going to be the case when we play against them for a while. But what I also would say is it's only 1-0. It is only 1-0. What do we do here? Like, the fact is, they're going to be attacking as relentlessly as they are, so there's no point in switching from our tactic. I think counter is just fine, particularly in these sort of games. You know, you never know what we could do in the second half. We might get a break or something at some point. Maybe a set piece. Cantini could whip a good ball in and get someone up on it. Get Cherry to act like the target man that we know he can be. But I think that they'll probably get a few more in the second half. I'm going to say 3-0 is going to be the final score here, which is reasonable. As long as we don't get thumped like 5-6-0, then I'd be happy, really. That's that's all I'm really asking for here. We need to close down Zlatan. That's easier said than done. He is Zlatan. Like, that is all. Uh, Dinier will close him down. Uh, maybe make a sub in a minute. But for now, since we've already made one, I might just try to hang on. It's still only 1-0, you know. They've had a lot of shots, and they've created quite a decent few chances, but it's surprising how they've only scored one goal, actually. I'm a little bit surprised at that. Jerry's not had the best games today. Should we maybe get a little bit of a different angle with Hugo maybe coming on? And, hmm... Who else? Is there one more substitution, perhaps, just to freshen up the midfield? Get Jan Vier off and get um, Gamiet on for a little bit of fruitiness for the final 15 minutes of this match. Do we try and go for it? I'm going to just encourage them a little bit. I don't know. Do we try 10 minutes on attacking for the final 10? If it's still 1-0 with 10 minutes to go, I might just have a crack at it, because we may as well. Oh, hello. Oh, of course, it's the other way, isn't it? Go on, win that. Oh, and David Luiz puts it in the empty net. Ah, that's a shame. 
that is a shame. But there we go. A 2-0 defeat wouldn't be the most embarrassing thing. We've not been good going forward today, and we've done okay at the back. But it's it was never going to be a win, was it? Let's face it. It's our first match against PSG. Disappointing that three of our players went for the same ball, and I have no idea what Benjamin Sieglist is doing there. I just have... I can't even fathom what he's playing at, but oh well. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. 2 0 would be reasonable for us. As long as our goal difference doesn't get too smashed in these sort of games, that's what I'm looking for. Gamiet, what is he doing? What, how did he manage to head that to the right hand side? Don't let Luis score. Come on, 2 0 would be fantastic. You know, oh, what a save. Oh, what a save. Oh, damn it. I mean, they're PSG. <laughs> We very nearly got away with that then. Sigris made some incredible stops and they thoroughly deserve the win here. And it's it's going to be like that for a little. What a save that is, by the way. And what a block that is. I thought we'd got away with it there. But that is a great strike from Danilo. And it's 3-0 to PSG. But that's what you get, isn't it? And it's not really a big deal. We just kind of got to move on from these games. But, you know, you've got to accept that we're going to lose quite a lot of our first few games against PSG. It's going to be a few years, I think, before we get a chance to actually beat them. But part of the save is going to be about measuring ourselves against them and... We can't fall... Yeah, exactly. No, I... Oh, of course. Yeah, whatever. I think they did all right. Like, okay, the scoreline is... That is completely justifiable, but what can you do? Um, still looking solid, though. And still... Well, actually, we've played first, so hopefully we won't drop too close to the relegation zone. We've got a game against uh, Bordeaux coming up soon, so it's going to be tough. The rest of the season is going to be tough, but we've got... You know, we've proven that we can win matches, both home and away. And we've proven that we can cause upsets. So I'm still pretty confident with the way things are going. We need some more performances like the Toulouse game. We need to get Cherry firing. And I think we're going to be able to do that over the next few matches. Now, I'm thinking um, possibly the Nice game. So this is a home match. It might be a bit more winnable, perhaps. I don't know. I don't want to go too far down, but I also don't want to go too close. So that's, a, that's fair enough. There's like five games in between. So we've got Bordeaux at home next, which is going to be tough. Leon, well not Leon, Leal away. They could be beatable, perhaps, if they carry on playing as badly as they are. They've got Emmanuel Riviere. They have just noticed. Uh, Lons, maybe? Con? Mm, yeah. And Montpellier. Actually, there's a few winnable games in here. I'd like to see us get a few more points on the board. At least a point a game. That's what I'm going for. A point a game is my sort of target for this year. We've got to rake in the money, and then next year we can start really sort of building. And that's what I'm really hoping to do. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. And if you've liked it even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and, of course, from the shadows in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a home game against Nice. Oh, that better be a nice one. I'm sorry, that was a horrific pun. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.